All right, ladies and gentlemen, I have Mr. Russ Fitz on. Uh, he is the swordfish expert. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. Uh, Russ, thanks so much for coming on. Thanks for having me, Eric. Yeah, man. Uh, looking through your Facebook, i immediately blown away because it's monster fish after monster fish. Um, how long have you actually been in the swordfish game? Oh, probably probably over 20 years. I, I think I, I caught my first one or, or saw my first one. Uh, I'd say probably 94 and, uh, from there it just kind of, it took off. I just like, I love the fish. It, it, it's just such a, a special fish, um, to me, um, just the, the power of the fish, um, just the color, just, I mean, everything about it. I'm just, I love it. I mean, they, it's just, it's just something different, you know, it's, um, I don't know. I just everybody's got that one fish that they that they love. I just I love swordfish. Yeah, I, under, I understand when you when you love something, you don't understand the why. It's just the the desire to want to do it. So I completely That's get that. Well, you say you yeah. saw your first one in the early nineties. What what were you doing in the process of of seeing that fish? Um, at that point, I was uh, uh right out of high school and. Um, I took a took a semester of uh, junior college and just just kind of I just found out that it just it, it wasn't for me at the time and um, didn't really have any direction at that point in my life and um, found out uh, my mom had a friend who said hey um they have a spot um, he's he's needing a mate on a a swordfish longline boat. And I was like, Hey man, that sounds pretty cool. So, um, I jumped on the opportunity and a couple of weeks later, I'm flying down to St. Thomas and getting on the boat and heading out uh, for the first time. So it was, uh, it was definitely an experience. So it was, um, it was pretty cool. I saw a lot of cool things. I mean, that's as epic as it gets out the gate going down to St. Thomas. To, I'm guessing you spend how long at a time out there on those commercial boats? A couple of weeks? Uh, they, yeah, it was, it was probably about a, a week and a half at a time. Yeah, we, we didn't, um, I mean, I wasn't down there sightseeing. I didn't see a lot of the, um, you know, beautiful places. It was, uh, it was more than most of the time out in the boat, actually all the time out in the boat. We, you know, when we had enough fish to come back in. It was, it was offload, ice up, get bait and right back out. So. Yeah. It's a, so you're basically it's a, until you until you fill the boat up and then it's time to do it again. Yeah, or either or, you know, uh, the owner's like, hey, you know, the price is right on the fish. You know, whatever you got, go ahead and bring them in. So it was it was it was usually usually about a day and a half steam to where we were fishing to get back to get back to port. And at that point, did you have any experience with ocean fishing, or was that just out the gate? thrown into the fire no um i grew up in south florida um so i actually started uh you know started started bass fishing with my dad my dad was a big uh bass fisherman and he had a boat and you know as soon not as soon as i was old enough to you know be able to cast a rod he was he was taking me out bass fishing to lake of the Chobe and from there, you know, just kind of graduated. Growing up on the coast, we were we were uh, Boca Raton, Fort Lauderdale area, right in there, and that's right on the coast. So, and I had some friends in high school, um, you know, that uh, they had boats and were able to get out offshore with them um, from time to time. And they had the mahi and the sailfish. So it was it was a it was it was a big part of my life growing up. So you knew from an early age that the ocean called you. Yeah, from an early age. Yeah. yeah, it was. I think probably the first time I had a, um, a friend of our family from church. Uh, my mom had dropped me off. I, I remember this so vividly. Um, I was probably about ten or eleven years eleven years old. And she had dropped me off at the at the Boca Inlet at the jetty there, and I was jigging up some bait and boat come by this is 
probably about seven o'clock in the morning and um he was catching bait too and uh it was it was a friend of ours um from church and and he's like hey man he said, like, why don't you come jump on a boat and go fishing with us? I'm like, well, my mom, he's like, don't worry. He's like, I got a, he had one of those two-way radios. He goes, he got on, he goes, he called his wife. He's like, call his mom. I got him. He's with me. And we went offshore and, and um, it was, we just had an awesome day. I mean, I mean, just the, seeing the, the, the colors of the ocean out deep, just the, the pretty blue water and we got into some some pretty nice dolphin and, and just the colors of the, the mahi mahi it was just like i was like man this is this is awesome yeah this is awesome. this is this is for me <laughs> it's it's such an epic thing and if, if any of the viewers and listeners haven't had a chance to do it i say book a trip for sure because everyone needs to at least experience once at least once because it'll change your perspective just to just everything you'll see, the sharks, the sea turtles, the, the like you said, the mahi, the, the overall experience is so different. For sure. Absolutely. So after you went on this long lining trip, was what was the progression into doing this on your own? Well, after working with them for a couple months, I it was I saw I saw the life that they lead. And it's, it's not a very glamorous one. I mean, it's, it's, I totally respect what they do. And, and a lot of people need to understand how, you know, the fish comes to the table. Um, these guys go out and risk their lives, you know, to, to bring fish to market. Um, but I, I just didn't feel that that was, that wasn't the, the path that I was going to take. So, uh, came back and at that point came back to the States, back to South Florida and, um, got a boat on, uh, or got a job as a mate on a head boat down there at a lighthouse point. And I was probably with them maybe about a year and, and the guy who was running that boat, um, he was he was moving back up. He was from uh, Merle's Inlet, South Carolina. And he was, he had just bought a small charter boat and was, um, going to go back home to Merle's Inlet and start running that with his son. And he, he kept talking about all the, I mean, just how good the fishing was up, you know, up there. And, um, he's got commercial permits and, and they group her in snapper fish and, and I was like, man, that sounds pretty cool. Do um, you think you can get me a job up there? And he's like, yeah, man. I was, he's like, he, he's he's got a big. I mean, his family's from that area, so he's like, yeah, my uh, my cousin runs a head boat up here. He's like, you got a job, no problem. So you know, next thing you know, I'm 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 moving up to South Carolina with him um, a year later, and and uh, he was. He was, uh, he kind of took me under his, under his wing for a little bit up there. And, you know, I, I lived to him until I got my feet on the ground and, and it just kind of took off from there. Um, was on the head boat up there for a year and as a mate. And then the following, uh, season, I went over to the charter side. They had a small charter fleet there, about six or seven boats. Got a first mate job on one of the charter boats there. And, did that for a season. And then the very next season over the winter, I went to sea school, got my hundred ton captain license. And the next year I was running a charter boat there. So <laughs> I moved up through the ranks pretty quick. Yeah. And, you know, um, they're at Captain Dick's Marina. It's crazy sisters Marina now, but, um, yeah, I was in, was in the, was in the charter fleet for, I did it probably for about eight years. So, uh, I, I did, uh, did a good bit of fishing down there. So it was, mm -hmm. it was, it was a good time. Right and you're, um, where are you based out of right now? I'm in, I'm in Wilmington right now. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. uh, um, from there, let's see, I, I came up this way 
um, in 06. Okay. Uh, I, I came up here, so I kind of got out of the, out of the, 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 the charter fishing down there is obviously seasonal, um, you know, summer months, vacation, people come down. So there's not much going on during, during the winter and just to kind of get by, um, some of the guys had commercial grouper snapper permits on their boat. So we would go commercial fish through the, through the winter, um, just to kind of get through to the next season. Uh, so that was, uh, that was, uh, you know, that, that was actually fun too. I mean, that's just, you know, just going out with your buddies and fish, you know, mm-hmm. just loading up on grouper and snapper. I mean, that was, that was awesome. And, uh, you know, go at, uh, you know, they were just like day trips, you know, stay, stay the night, come back. So, and, uh, that's, that's how we made it through the, through the season. And then, um, what brought me up this way is, um, I just kind of, I kind of, I wanted to progress and move up the line. And then I got into, uh, uh, private, uh, private sport fishing boats. So, um, uh, got me, um, uh, got on a boat up here. That's what brought me up this way. So I was, uh, working on a, with a family up here in 06 on a 50, they started out with a 45 foot Bertram and then they, uh, they went to a, a 55 foot case and sport fish. So. And, uh, I was with them a few years and that was, uh, it was great. So, so were you a private captain during those, that thing? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I was, uh, yeah, I was, I, I was a private gig with them. I've always wondered how that worked. Uh, do they like give you a, a time that they want on the water with them? How does that scheduling work? It's, um, uh, basically you're just, I mean, you're on the boat full time. Just, uh, it's, it's maintenance. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, it's about, there's always something to do. Um, you know, you got system to check, you know, weekly and just make sure everything's running properly. And then, you know, if it, Hey, I'm going to be in town this week or, or, you know, the, having some people come in and, you know, you just kind of get the boat ready to fish and, yeah. or if they, you know, wanted to travel somewhere, you know, we, we, we run around, fish some tournaments, um, did that through South Carolina and North Carolina. And they did a couple trips to the Bahamas. They, they wintered in the Palm beach. So, uh, they took the boat down there in the winter time. Okay. And, uh, and what was the progression after that? Because that would put you what? 2010 to 12 ish. Yeah, that was, um, that was up to Oh nine. And then, uh, after that, um, the Lord just took me in a different direction. He just, he just took me out of the game okay. and, uh, but always, you know, always, uh, made some really good friends here while I was here, um, you know, running the boat. So, always, always had access and, you know, to, you know, jump, Hey man, we're going fishing. Come on, go with us. You know, fish this tournament or, you know, I'm fishing this, you know, fishing Saturday, come on, go with us. So, you know, I've just, I've been really blessed to have the opportunity to still be able to fish, yeah. you know, a good bit. Well, that, I mean, that's incredible, man. So what is the, let's get into like the specifics of like a trip. So say your buddy calls you and he's like, Hey, Let's go Saturday. What's the first thing that you're going to want to do? Yeah, so, at, I mean, at this point, um, right now, it's, and I'm, and I'm not really, I'm not really advertising it, but, you know, if somebody, you know, I'm, a couple of weeks ago, somebody had just randomly texted me and say, hey, man, I'm, I'm needing some help going out, you know, sword fishing. We, you know, will you come help me? And I was like, man, I'll, I'll be glad to do it. So, you know, we just, you know, uh, he's like, man, coming over and I'll, you know, I'll, I've been after, I think I got everything I need. Um, you know, just kind of went through a list and, and just, you know, went over and checked his gear out and, and just made sure we had everything, you know, ready to go, you know, when, you know, when we had a, a weather window and, and, um, went out there let's see it wasn't it was two saturdays ago i think and the fish were biting it was it was it, i mean the bite was on there's a boat a boat and um lambert lambert long 
uh, in the long shot at Moss Channel. He was he went out Friday and caught five. Mm-hmm. And I was like, man, I, I, it's like it's time to go. So mm-hmm. I told him, I said, let's go, uh, you know, let's go tomorrow. Let's go Saturday. So, we, so we we went out there, and um, I mean, within the first ten minutes of the drift, we were hooked up. Had a fish coming to the boat. So, yeah, it was. So we we ended up catching catching three that day. Um, we caught one one nice one, probably about hundred pounds, hundred ten pounds. Put you know had that one in the boat, and then we had uh, released released another small one, and then had another one uh, right up to the boat that was jumping all over the place. And I, it just uh, <laughs> we didn't quite take um take care of the situation at that moment and uh mm. and the fish ended up going back down and pulling the hook but it was it was pretty much a caught fish it was right there at the leader yeah so ended up with you know had had pulled off another fish so we you know we ended up you know three for four on the day which is it's pretty good fishing out here yeah well you uh earlier you mentioned your buddy said come over and check out my gear what kind of gear do you need to to sword fish Uh, you, you need, um, pre- I mean, you need an electric reel. Um, they've, they've got, uh, some hooker electrics that hook up that you can mount onto a, um, 80, 80 wide Shimano. And they have other, uh, other reels, uh, like the LP reel, the LP, uh, 1200. Uh, that's, those are, those are 12 volt. Um, that's my, my reel of choice. Um, so basically you need, um, you know, just something that's got a line counter on it. And, and those two reels do have line counter. So, you know, cause I mean, you're fishing, you want to stay in a certain depth on the bottom and, um, and that's, and having that feature really, really helps out. So you, what would be the, the range of depth that you would be fishing from the surface? From the surface, um, uh, fishing in 1600 feet. Um, I, I want, I want to keep the bait probably within 200 feet of the bottom. Okay. So, so, so right there in that range from a, from a hundred to 250 feet right off the bottom in that range. Okay. So you'll set your line counter to stop it at 250 from the bottom or drop to what? A thousand. Is that how well, that it's, it, it's, uh, it's a little bit different it's not just like stopping a boat and just like, you know, drop, dropping it, you know, mm-hmm. like you are bottom fishing. You actually go, go on a troll, um, at about six knots, it's about, about the speed you would like troll for meat fishing, you know, out there. And you, and you get your leader, you're fishing a real long leader, about 150 foot long. Okay. So once, once you get your leader on, uh, you have uh, three lights that slide up and down the leader and you want those lights. The first light I put about 20 feet from the bait and then go another 20 feet, attach that light and then go another 20 feet and attach the third light. So I have a string of lights, like three in a row, 20 feet apart. So that's 20, 40, 60. So I still have leader on the reel. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let the rest of that go out. And then at the end of the leader is where you're going to attach your, um, with a long line clip, you're going to attach your 10 pound lead on the end of that. So the boats, so you're going, you know, roughly five, six knots, you know, at this point. So throw the lead over and as it's going out, you know, it's, it's going away from the boat and it's, you you probably have about two to three pounds of drag on the reel. You're not in free spool, but you're having it, you know, to keep it from backlashing as it's going, mm-hmm. cause you know, 10 pounds of lead is going to take the, the line off your reel pretty quick. Mm-hmm. So roughly let about five, four to 500 feet out at a time, stop it, stop the reel. I mean, the boat's still going, going forward. Just trying to straighten the leader out a little bit, about three, four seconds. And then, let the bait fall or let the lead fall again for another four to 500 feet of revolutions on the reel and do that 
three, you know, four times until I get to the depth. You know, I, I probably stop. It, it really all depends on current too. But once I get out to, you know, 1650 to 1700, you know, revolutions on the reel, I'll say, hey, Cap, I'm at the, I'm at the length that I need to be, slow the boat down. He'll, so he'll stop it and then start backing up to the lead. So as he's backing the boat up to it, it's, it's steadily falling till you get right over. So your line's straight up and down. Okay. And basically you just, you, you're just trying to keep your, your, at this point, you're fishing the rod off the side of the boat and you just want to keep the line straight up and down like vertical. So like if you weren't good, if, if you were just to let the boat drift, obviously the boat would get away from, you know, you, you can start to see the line scope away from the boat and you don't want that. You know, you, you kind of, you kind of want to stray straight up and down as best you can. And then from that point on, you're going to just drift the ledge or wherever you're fishing. Yeah. Over the, over the bottom that you choose to fish, um, at that point, it, it's, you're, it's kind of weird because when, when you look on the GPS, you're, you know, the current's running up to the north, northeast, and you have the boat pointed to the southwest. So you're pointed into the current and you're going in reverse, but you like, you're kind of slow trolling into the current, but you're actually, you look on the GPS and, and you're going in reverse. It's kind of, it's like, that. it's, it's kind of weird, but <laughs> It, it looks like you're going to the south, but you're going to the north, mm -hmm. pointing to the southwest. But yeah, yeah that so, so basically, it, yeah, basically, it, it's just kind of power fishing at that point. Mm -hmm. But yeah. And what type of bait do you prefer for swordfish? Um, I make my own baits. Um, I use strip baits, um, bonita bellies, um, uh, dolphin bellies work really good. Um, Oh, I've caught them. I've caught them on Wahoo bellies. Just, you know, they're, I mean, they're not really picky eaters. Um, but my main go-to bait is a, is a, is a Bonita strip with a, uh, with a, a skirt over the top of it, like a skirt that you would skirt a, a Marlin lure mm -hmm. with instead of cutting, you know, you, you just like put a hole in the top where the, where the line will slide through it and it'll just slide right over the top of the bait. So it's, it's, a, it's a bait probably, Oh, I don't know, probably 10 to 11 inches long with a, with a single, um, 10 out stainless steel, 7691 hook. Okay. So uh, these swordfish are they sight, sight eaters, I'm assuming because of the light. I mean, they, they've got it. If, if you've seen the fit, they have a humongous eye it, it, and it, there's very, very little light down in 1600 feet. So they, you know, with the size of their eye, they can take in all the light that, you know, that what little light is down there, but having the, you know, the three, the three, um, the three flashing lights that I have on my leader is kind of an attractant. Um, uh, I don't know. I, I guess you could say, you know, teaser as you will, but you know, it's, they, they have strobes and, you know, flashers and then, you know, some that, some that blank and um, yeah, I guess you could say it's kind of a, 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 an attractant. And what, uh, what size boat would be the minimum for this type of fishing here out of Wilmington, North Carolina? You would, you would want something now, now you're running close to 80 miles offshore. So, you know, you, you know, something, um, in the, in the 30 foot range center console, 30, 35, um, you know, a good size boat, uh, you know, that can handle, um, you know, some, if some weather happened to kick up, you know, out there that you you know, wouldn't be in a bad situation in, mm -hmm. so, you know, any center calls on the, in the, in the 30 foot range. I mean, I've, there's, there, I've seen some guys do it in some, in some smaller boats, but you know, it's, 
you know, it, you know, sometimes the afternoon Southwest will, you know, kind of whip up a little bit and it's, you know, it gets a little, it gets a little choppy, you know, coming in, you know, from 80 miles. It's, it's a long ride. It, it's a lot better ride on a 35 foot, 40 foot center console than it is on a, than a, than a 25. Yeah, for sure on that. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned earlier that your buddy, uh, said, let's, you know, let's go. And you were like, yeah, we got to go. They're catching them. What, uh, what conditions would you consider right for you to make that 80 mile trip? I like, I like Southwest breeze. Um, you know, f- probably, uh, five, five to 10 knots out of the Southwest is, is really ideal. Mm-hmm. you know, to, you know, to variable winds. Um, I, 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 I haven't done very good on a, on a Northeast. It, it just, it just does. It's not, it's not a very good fish, you know, fishing conditions. The, the current, you know, step stacks up against the, the Northeast and it just, it gets, it gets sloppy. It's just mm-hmm. not. That makes sense. It's, yeah. You're in a washing machine all day. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. i I can't imagine getting out there and then finding out that the conditions weren't what you needed. So you really have to prepare ahead of time to know what you're getting into. Does swell come into play in that? I mean, if it's, if it's spread out, you know, apart, you know, anything over, you know, eight, eight seconds or greater, you know, it's, it, you know, five foot, you're really not going to notice all that much. Um, you know, you know, basically it's more the, maybe the, the chop, you know, that gets, uh, that gets the boat, you know, rocking a little bit. And I, and it's not, you know, I've, I've, I've fished some, some, some rougher stuff out there. You know, it's, it's not, you know, it's not ideal. It's, it's a little more, it's a little more work, you know, on the cap and, uh, you know, over there behind the wheel to, you know, keep the boat, you know, straight and, you know, where it needs to be, um, you know, than it is if it was, you know, variable winds or, you know, five knots. But, um, you know, if you have, if you have a good, a good crew, you know, captain behind the wheel that can, you know, keep the boat where it needs to, to be. Um, you can, you can get some bites. Yeah. What, uh, what is your record fish personal best? Um, I'll, I'll tell you the story on that one. Um, <laughs> I want to hear it. Good. Was, <laughs> yeah. Um, I was, uh, coming back from, from Virginia beach. Um, I was fishing with some guys up there and, um, and we were, and we were flying back and, and there were some other boats that were, um, coming, coming back. This is flying back on a, on a, on a private, you know, jet. And I was like, Hey man, um, the guy I was fishing with, he, he wasn't leaving. I needed to be back Monday morning, you know, for work. So he's like, Hey, I, I think I can get you on this guy. He's, he's leaving. He's coming back to Wilmington. So Wilmington. So he called him. He's like, yeah, man. He's like, they're, they're going to come by here a little bit, pick you up, you know, take you to the, the airplane. So, um, the guys, I ended up hitching a ride back to Wilmington with, was, uh, Cameron, Cameron Bailey and Jackson David of, uh, intercoastal angler. And, on the, on the flight back, um, I didn't know, I didn't know this, but, uh, Jackson, um, he's, he was, he's been trying to catch one. He's, he said, man, he's like, I'm, I've been trying this. He's like, uh, he's like, what do you think about this? He's like, oh man. I was like, well, what about this? I've been, I've been trying this. I was like, yeah, well, you know, you know, that could work. So, he, he was, he, you know, we were kind of going back and forth on the, on the plane ride home. And I was like, well, why don't we just go? He's like, oh man, it's like, that's, that's awesome. Let's go, man. You know, we're going to, he's like, I'll, I'll let you know the next time it, you know, it gets pretty. So, so we, so he called me, he's like, man, he's like, Captain, I think it's going to be good this weekend. He's like, he's like, I, I got the boat ready. I was like, man, that's cool. I was like, um, uh, I was like, you need me to bring anything? He's like, yeah. he's like, no, nah, man. I, was like, I got everything. He's like, just, just show up. You know, I got it. So I show. He's. I said, I said, what time do you want me to be there? He said, four o'clock in the morning. <laughs> he he fishes early. He was trying to be out there like, when the sun came up. Yeah, he was. He's like, he's like, be. He's like, be, be here at four o'clock. I was like, okay, four o'clock in the morning. So 
he's got a uh, he's got a thirty five contender, and I he's like he's like don't worry about it. It's like, I got you, I got your beanbag set up and everything back there. He's like you know he's like just just get settled in. I was like all right, and I get settled in and and he takes off, man. He's like we we're going like I don't know he's, we're we're probably doing fifty on the way out there. Yeah, and it's getting it on the water. Especially it's getting it. That 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 boat can get it. He's got. So um so so we get out there and um and uh and, and get the line set up and I think we made a couple drifts and um I I I can't remember if we if we had any any bites at that point and I I think we I think we were setting up for our, our third drift and as we were we had the line out and as we were backing up to it he was backing up to the line as as the lead was sinking we were just almost to the about to the point where we're getting close to be straight up and down and i noticed the rod like the boat was kind of we were a little bit sideways in the sea and i and i was looking at the rod i always watch the rod tip and it it it, it kind of it, it did some it like it stalled in the air like you know when you have ten pounds of lead on a rod tip, you know it's it's got a good bend to it. And how you detect the bite is as as the boat gets in a rhythm, and it's not a, the the bite the swordfish bite is very very subtle. If you're not you know paying attention and watching, you I mean you could easily miss it. So I it it's I always. It's really important to focus, have somebody on the boat always watching the rod. So as we were turning around, the boat kind of it was it was doing some rocking it, and I and this it's like it's the I was like man that rod tip should have gone down right at that point, and it stalled in the air. I was like wow. I was like do you see that? He's like yeah, man, that's like that looked weird. I was like kind of looked like we had a little bite there or something. I was like I know it wasn't bottom because I had stopped. Um, a couple of drifts before I, I, I kind of knew what depth we were fishing in and I know how much line I had at. And I was like, I don't think that was bottom. I was like, that's, that's probably a bite. So I probably another 10 or 15 minutes I, as, as we were drifting along, um, started getting another bite. I, now I don't know if it was the same fish or not, but you know, we, we ended up, you know, hooking up, hooking up to that fish. Um, I got hooked up to it. Had it coming as I, as I put, as I put the, um, a little bit more drag to get the scope out of the, um, out of the line to get tight on the fish, the reel stalled out. Like, so I'm, I'm probably, at this point, 18 pounds of drag, and I'm pushing the bunt, and the rock and it just like stops. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, the the motor's still going, but the reel's not turning. Yeah. So I was like, okay, cat, we're tight. We're yeah. you know we're on something right here. And it was just at that point, it was just it just kind of stalled out. It was like a stalemate, probably for about five minutes. Like it wasn't taking out, and I wasn't gaining anything. Just kind of hanging on the bottom there for a little bit, and then like just after about five five minutes the fish just slowly started coming up, started coming up. And I was, I was getting line, getting line. And most, most of the times, um, your bigger fish will start after they bite, they'll start swimming. They'll, they'll start swimming to the surface. So at that point, you know, we were, we were getting pretty good line at that point. And, uh, I can't remember if we got, Really, want you really what you want to do is you want to get close enough to that fish to get that ten pound lead off, and most of the times you can do that. I mean, they'll you can get within you know two hundred feet of that fish to get to get that big lead off, and then you know then then you're straight up on that fish, and not and not kind of you know fighting that lead along with the mm-hmm. fish. Yeah, and and you got and you got to play the fish a little bit different at that point when when you have the lead on still attached to your leader to when you get the lead off, then, then you can fight the fish a little bit differently. You, you know, you can kind of put a little bit more drag on at that point. So I, I can't remember if it was 
30 or 45 minutes into the fight, I think we got the, we finally, the lead came up, we got the lead off and, uh, it was, it was probably about another hour, close to two hours in that we actually had to fish up to the boat and it was, it was a nice fish. It, it just everything we had, we had a good captain on the wheel. We had a good guy, Jackson, that was throwing the harpoon. I mean, you need to close the deal on, 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 on a big swordfish. You got to have a really good team with you. You got to have guys that, you know, know how to drive the boat, not, mm-hmm. you know, be, be in the position that for somebody to throw the harpoon at the fish and fish comes up throws a harpoon, sticks them, bring it. I mean, it was, and all of us were like, wow, this, this thing is, this thing is, this is pretty impressive. I mean, I knew, I mean, that was, I knew that was, that was the biggest fish at that point that I, that I, that I've caught. And it, it ended up being 515 as, as, uh, at the scale. Yeah, that's mad. Over at a at at a bridge tender. Yeah, it, it took um <laughs> it took all all three of us with ropes and, and gaffs to luckily he had a um a door back on his transom to get that and that thing barely fit through that. I mean it mm-hmm. it they they have some um massive girth on them, mm-hmm. those fish. And they and they carry that all the way down to the tail. I mean, it's just like, I mean, their tail's like a telephone pole. Well, they're the apex I mean, predator down there. I mean, absolutely. It was, uh, and we, and we got them, we got them to the boat and there's, I mean, we were a lot of high fiving and, and hooting and hollering. It was, it was, uh, it was awesome. It was awesome. And that, that was my first time out with Jackson David. That, that was our, that was our first fishing trip together. <laughs> I might would retire going in, just go ahead and hang it up. <laughs> and, and, and there was another boy on the boat. That, I think that was his, that was his first time out sword fishing. So he's ruined ever. Too. <laughs> and I was like, man, you might as well quit. I said, you're done. I was like, you, yeah. you probably won't get any better than that right there. So it was, uh, it, it was, it was a day I'll never forget. It was, it was a really good, really good trip. Yeah, it's really cool to hear that we have access to that type of fishery here in North Carolina. You know, so often everyone just thinks about, or, you know, I do it too, but I think about Florida and everything they have to offer and how close it is and just how different it is. But at the same time, you know, with a little bit more money, you can do the same thing here. We have a really good fishery out here. Um, a lot, I just, I, I don't think, I don't think people realize the, the fisher we have, like you said, it, it is a little bit further of a run. It's, you know, another 15 miles, you know, past the break of where you would walk a fish. Um, but the fish are there. Uh, I mean, and I, I think a lot more people, um, would want to get up and go out there and do it. I just, I think there are a lot of people that just don't, it's, it's a long way to go and not, not really know what you're doing. So I, I think there's a lot of people really interested in wanting to go do that. They just don't know how to. And, um, it's, you know, I just, I'll, I just love helping people, you know, uh, you know, go out there and, 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 and catch them. Mm-hmm. Well, if someone had questions for you, what's the best way to ask? Is it through your Facebook? Um, Yeah, probably. Yeah, I'm. Okay. I'm. I'm not a real big social media guy. I mean, I, I post mm-hmm. a little bit on on uh, on Facebook, but not much. But uh, I've got some things. Uh, me and a friend of mine, uh, we have in the works. Um, we're just kind of working out a, a few uh, details right now. But um, we're we're gonna have something. We're gonna bring something here to Wilmington. Um, kind of like a like a, a swordfish uh, workshop kind of seminar okay. deal. So. So that's, um, that'll be, um, uh, that'll be here hopefully within the next couple months. So okay. 
I'll let you know when I, yeah, you keep me updated and I'll promote it for sure because we need good people with information and even better people running it. So for sure. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, um, I, I, I really would like to see more people, I mean, you know, get out there and, uh, and do it. And I, and I, and I think, I think there is a lot of people who do want to do it, but just, just don't know how. So, um, now hopefully we can get that, um, you know, you know, worked, uh, here pretty soon. And, and, um, and I'll just, uh, I'll let you know all the details. Um, you know, when you get everything hammered out. Yeah. Sounds good. Was there anything else you'd like to add before we wrap it up? Um, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't think so. I think, okay. we, I think we covered, yeah, it's just, you know, it's, it's just something different. You know, you, you know, you, a lot of people know about the, you know, the good, uh, you know, marlin, white marlin, sailfish we have it here. And just, you know, a lot of people just, they don't, they don't really know. It, it's, it's, it's something different to do. Um, some of our best and, and you can do it year round. It's, it's not, a, it's not a seasonal thing. Um, we've, we've caught fish out here in just about every, every month of the year. Um, seen, seen some of the, some of the bigger fish, bigger quality fish, uh, through, uh, July, August, September, October through there. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, there's any time of the year, if you have the right conditions, you can go out there and, and make a drop and, and catch a fish. And it's just, you know, it's something different. You know, if somebody wants to try something different or, you know, always, always wanted to, uh, you know, get a, get a wild hair and, and, and go out to the deep side and try it. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're there. Mm -hmm. for, you know, definitely there. Yeah. Well, I'm going to link uh, your Facebook down below and, uh, man, thank you again for coming on and talking about swordfish. I, I could talk to you for hours about other species, but we'll save those for another day. Oh, absolutely. I, um, I, I just love talking, talking swordfish. So, I mean, I just, uh, yeah, anytime, anytime about any type of fish. So, so. You know, I've I've done a lot of different, you know, commercial commercial grouper snapper, um, you know, fish some tournaments, blue marlin tournaments. So it's it's a uh, I've got a done a lot of different types of fishing, but but not much inshore. I know you're more of an inshore guy. Only because I get seasick, I'd be out there uh, for sure. I know I'd live out there if I could. So. Well, they they have they make seasick pills for that. Well, I, ju I just got some of the scalp scalpamine patches today. So <laughs> I, I've heard good things about them. I'm going to try them out. So what's the furthest that you've been out? Uh, 70 miles, 60, 70. Okay. Yeah, out of uh, Oregon Inlet. Okay. Yeah, That's we. Uh, it's the only time I've been out that far, and I was sick all day long. My, <laughs> my family... It's I had family come in from Montana and I think they caught 23 mahi and I didn't catch a single one because I was yeah. sick. And... That makes for a bad day. I've, I've, I've felt bad before and it's, it, it's, it's not fun. Yeah. So I, I know, yeah. I know exactly how that That's feels. Why, man, I, I have nothing but appreciation for everybody that does it. And I'm, if I could take one thing about me and change it, that would be it. But, no, but you yeah, so um, I just I just never really got much in you know to the uh, inshore you know inside the inside the waterway stuff. Uh, just never really I don't know. I guess I was always busy offshore doing stuff. But, well, um, it would, it'd, it'd be hard to go from that to come inside and, and feel anything. No, but there's I mean there's actually I mean that's that's a that's a whole different ball game in itself. I mean you got to deal with like tides and you know, you got your spots and then having to worry about somebody, if somebody's going to, you know, there or not, and, yeah, all the, all the duck traffic and, you know, inshore, that's a, that's a whole other ball game. It's a lot and it's never what you expect. You see, you got to deviate every time you go out. It, it's never make a plan and it works. So. No, I, yeah, those guys definitely have it down, dialed in. I want to be at, at this spot, at this tide, at this time. And that's, that's uh, that takes a lot of man hours to figure, yeah, figure that stuff out. 
and you yell yeah, i tell everybody just you, you got to go you learn by doing it you learn by the mistakes it's the only yeah. way to do it if you unless you have someone that already knows it all that's teaching you yes yeah, um, definitely uh takes a lot of a lot of a lot of hours on the on the water you know learning learning what works and what doesn't work and just you know also sharing information with other you know you know friends and stuff have a, have a good you know networking guys who will share their information with you yeah that's the thing you got to be careful because you know, a lot of people are out to just get and take and there aren't many people that are willing to meet you 50 50 on that stuff i'm lucky that i i have a few good friends and you know we we talk every few days about what's going on but yeah, it's taking time too. You know, it's not like I just moved here and and had a, a group of guys. So it's uh, it's a part of the process. Yeah, I think uh, some of my friends say I give a little bit too much information, but I I I can't be that way. I mean, I, I just I think that's just the 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 charter captain in me. Um, I just really enjoy seeing other people, you know, either, you know, whether it's just catching their first swordfish or, 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 you know, anything else, just help, you know, helping them achieve, you know, what they want. It just, cause I've, I've caught a lot of fish, you know, over the years and not, not that I don't still enjoy it, but, you know, to really, you know, appreciate everyone and, and just kind of see the, it kind of gets me excited seeing somebody catch their first fish or get really oh, yeah. excited about a fish. That, that kind of gets me pumped up, you know. Well, you mentioned it earlier that the good Lord uh, changed your path, but at the same time, if you continue to look out for people and and give a little bit more than what you think you should, he's going to give you a little more than you expect. Uh, that's how that works. Oh, I, I, I totally believe in that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Well, well, Russ, thanks, thanks again so much, man. Um, it's been a pleasure. We, we're at forty-seven minutes, so time flies when you're having fun. Oh wow! Okay, didn't seem that long. Yeah, yeah. No, I was, uh, <laughs> thanks, thanks, uh, thanks for having me on. I, I, I really enjoyed it. Yeah, man. Well, I'll, I'll catch you next time. Thanks again. All right. Thanks, Eric. All right. We're. Uh, I just stopped recording. And that was really good, man. Thank you so much. Oh well, thank you. I was. I was, I don't know, I was, I was hoping I wouldn't be, uh, I'm, I'm not.